prevent crooked teeth. This is the five point prevention plan. Point one, stand up straight and shut your mouth. Point two, eat with your mouth closed. Point three, chew gum. Point four, lip tape at night. And point five, take good records. I'm recommending this is entailed somewhere between the ages of four to six. I don't go younger than four because I just worry about kids choking and things like that. But that be on yourself if you want to go younger than the age of four. Now, I could ask why we're doing this. Well, we're doing this because despite popular public opinion and the orthodontic opinion, there's a strong environmental component. You know, the way we live, our lifestyle is responsible to a far larger extent than we imagine to why teeth are crooked. The etiology of malocclusion, we call it officially. Now, throughout evolution, until relatively recently, we had perfectly straight teeth. You know, I couldn't tell you our ancestors had sleep apnea. I couldn't tell you if they had ADHD and these other problems or type two diabetes. We think less, certainly, but we don't know that because our ancestors, well, they're all dead. But we know where their teeth were, or in fact, teeth still are, because we've got skulls. So it is clear and obvious that there was far less malocclusion. If there was, in fact, you go back to hunter-gatherer times, and it seems that there was no malocclusion. Teeth were perfectly straight in these big, broad arches. And there's no other, well, you look at all the other primates. We're the only primate that's got this problem, and there's a lot of different primates, and their teeth fit together absolutely perfectly, as long as they are wild and they are healthy. Then, of course, we've got lots of other more indigenous peoples alive today. You know, think of that guy walking off the African Serengeti or the Brazilian outback or the um, Amazon rainforest or some Inuits. And, you know, people, the, the more traditional and um, harmonious your lifestyle seems to be, the straighter your teeth are. You know, these guys have got great facial architecture. They tend to have a big, broad smile with all 32 teeth, you know, including the wisdom teeth. Not one or two, but seems to be everyone. You know, like I, my fingers fit on my hands. And it seems that since we've gone from this hunter-gatherer era into this modern industrialized era, the faces have changed shape. And that's affecting the internal structure as well. And I, I believe leading to malocclusion. And we see this epidemic of a lot of problems like sleep apnea. And maybe all of these problems related to the head are related to each other and this change. And my worry is that my speciality, and you know, I'm an orthodontist, I qualified from Aarhus, which was considered to be the top university for growth and development in orthodontics at the time, is, well, that we might, they, that my speciality may pay lip service to the fact that there is a strong environmental, you know, a lifestyle influence on crooked teeth, but we're treating it as if it's genetic. And I think one of the big problems is, is the foundation stones, this yellow line I draw here. That's when we took our normative data. And if you've got a foundation stone that's in the wrong place, you're going to struggle to make sense of things. And that's my big problem. And if you go to link one at the, in the description underneath, you'll see the efforts I've been trying to go to to gain a debate on why teeth are crooked within my profession. And I'm just asking the simplest question is, we don't understand the cause of the problem that we don't really understand the problem. And of course, we're, we're not looking at prevention. And prevention, prevention is always the ultimate answer. And that's what I aspire towards gaining in people. You know, that's what this video is about. Okay, so the first point, stand up straight and shut your mouth. This isn't a new idea. What I'm saying, if you've got weak muscles and from previous nasal obstruction, you've developed a habit of hanging your mouth open. So you've got poor body posture, you're not nose breathing, you know, you risk your face falling down. And that's what I'm worried is happening. As the face falls down, the cross-sectional area reduces and there's less space for teeth, the tongue and the airway. And that's my concern. So stand up straight and shut your mouth. Try and gain that ingrained in your kids because something 
that you can encourage them to do now could become a habit of a lifetime. You know, get it when they're young, make habits now that last a lifetime. Then point two, eat with your mouth closed, okay? So here's an article from the Sun newspaper. It was a Shutterstock image, and that's link number two at the bottom. And they're suggesting eating with your mouth open. I, I don't agree with that. I think half of myofunctional therapy, a concept that has been shown to reduce sleep apnea in children by 62%, I think the low-lying fruit is simply eat with your mouth shut. If you can get children to eat with their mouth shut, I think that's a major milestone. It's not complex, it's intuitive. It's a relatively simple thing, but you have to enforce that. You have to sit opposite them and remind them. You know, the old, old fashioned way was sitting with a wooden spoon and poking them, but eat with your mouth shut. This is not rocket science. This is not complex and get that habit in young. Then chewing gum. I get my kids to chew from when they come home from school, until they go to bed. You want to prevent crooked teeth. These tougher gums can be really useful. I don't warrant for what's in them. I've just used them and I've found them very effective and the kids chew. I found a little bit expensive. So I get the kids to take the chewing gum out before the ma their evening meal and put them back again after their evening meal. But they're basically told, or me and my wife are encouraging them to chew gum all the time they're not in school to you know build the muscles up this is the single most important factor that seems to come out of the research is this change from a really tough ancestral diet to a really soft modern diet so what's the answer replicate the toughness of chewing you know build the muscles up i've got a tough jaw i've got, I've got a strong jaw i've got big chewing muscles maybe those are related um, you know use it or lose it okay point four lip tape at night. It's worthwhile doing this during the daytime a little bit first to get a child used to it. And from the Sleep Foundation website, they say, if you have difficulty breathing through your nose due to allergies, nasal polyps, or other reasons, you should avoid mouth taping. That's link number three in the description below. So I, I, I'm not an expert on um, breathing and um, I'm, I'm not a respiratory doctor and I think it'd be very wise to follow, check with your doctor before doing anything like this. I do it with my children and if you can do it, I think it's a really good idea, but check with your doctor first. The next point, point five, take good records. If you don't know where you've come from, you don't know where you're going. And this is really, really important. So what I use is, this is an image from my clinic. We have a telephoto um, lens. We've got a 200 millimeter lens. I take it at nearly four meters. It's best to use artificial lighting against a um, neutral background, because if you use artificial lighting, it's always gonna be the same. If you're gonna use daylight, it's amazing how daylight changes and you don't notice it because our eyes are sort of adjusting all the time. But if you have a photograph that you can overlay, I'll add that down as an extra link. Medical facial overlay, it shows you how you can overlay photographs to, 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 to chart how your child's growth is occurring. Um, then finally, please support our campaign, Prevent Crooked Teeth. You can go and sign the campaign. Um, I'd love um, some donations if possible. That's gonna be link number four at the bottom. The type of treatment I do is buy a block the trepics. You know, I, I, I believe we're gaining the best improvements in facial form ever achieved by any clinic anywhere on the planet with the possible exception of Simon in Melbourne. I don't know, I would, I'd love to compete, compare with someone, you know, take my challenge up. Um, but the bottom line is it's simple, it's cheap. It's doable and I, I believe it's safe, you know, as long as you're, you're checking and you're following this advice here. So why not do it? I don't have clinical controlled trials. As I said, I've really tried to get my profession to debate why teeth are crooked, that six year letter writing campaign, just to try and, try and get that debate, you know, to get the, my professional body to debate why, to repeat 
the debate of 1937, I think it was the last time they debated this. So a president has been set. I'd love to do that again. I'd love you to sign this campaign. Let's get some science behind it. My big mission is to get the spotlight of modern medical research to shine on this area. You know, the technique I do, bioblock orthotropics, you know, it's really interesting. It's got great promise, but you know, you need teams of researchers to prove and develop these ideas. And better to prevent. To prevent this and possibly not just prevent crooked teeth. Maybe you're going to prevent sleep apnea. Maybe you're going to prevent a whole host of other problems like jaw joint problems, forward head postures. We don't know, but give it a go.